Welcome back Seven Days to Die modding fans. This is Zith and here we have part two of our tutorial series on how to use Unity to create and export assets for use in Seven Days to Die. So on the scene in front of you we have uh, the Hello World cube that we left off with yeah. and the assets there um, and the material Hello World and so on. So basically it's exactly where we left off. So let's go ahead and get started. What we want to do today is we want to go ahead and import uh, a new model from the asset store. And we want to take that model and correctly orient it and scale it to an appropriate size for use in the game. We want to add a collider to it so we can hit it with an arrow or not be able to walk through it. And then we want to package that up and this time we're going to package it um, and package it at the same time with the cube into a single export package. So we'll show you how to do those things on this tutorial. Let's get started. First we need to go up here and click on the Asset Store tab and you see it puts a default asset to it. So we want to search for uh, something interesting to put in the game. Uh, I like these rusty objects because um, they're kind of old and apocalypse -y. So let's do that. We'll look for a, uh, a bike or a tricycle um, that's rusty. So I'm going to um, go ahead and search on rusty. Click. And it pops up some various rusty barrels and stuff. But here's a rusty tricycle I think that will be useful. So you click on rusty tricycle. Brings up, you can read a little bit about what's in it and reviews on it and so on. And click the import button. And that will pop up a little little package here. You look at it, it says, yeah, and click import. And that will put down in your assets this little rusty tricycle, which if we click on, it will actually show you the little prefab that we're going to be using here. And it has its own materials and so on and so forth. So good, we're done with the store there. Um, go back to our scene here. And we want to go ahead and take this asset, the little rusty um, tricycle prefab and drag it and drop it. We could drag it and drop it here or we could just drag it and drop it here. I like to do it that way. And there it is. And you can see our cube's still there as well. Now you can toggle these things in the scene. We have two objects in the scene. You can toggle them on and off of visibility purposes simply by clicking the little box up here next to the object. So if we're on the rusty tricycle object, click this box see it goes away and comes back as we toggle it and we can do that essentially with our cube the same way make that go away now I like to leave the cube there because we know that that is the um, position in the world a reference point for us um, as I think I mentioned before um, in many cases that 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 block if you put in a multi dim uh, statement in the XML or an offset it would actually take that block and move it halfway into the ground. So be, be aware that um, with, with when you add, start adding XML to move models around in the game, it will reset that block down a half a block. So we'll show that in, in a minute. So let's look at our rusty tricycle. Um, I'd like to turn this sideways so I can see the profile a little better. So first of all, we need to go ahead and rotate that. And so when we have selected the tricycle, we go over here to the transform and you see it's already been rotated on the x-axis 90 degrees. Now the x-axis um, is your basically your lateral axis, but we want to turn this on the vertical axis so it like spins this way. And here's a picture of pole here, that's the y-axis, and we're going to kind of turn it around that pole. So if we come over to the rotation here and we type in minus 90, you notice we've now turned it sideways. So that's good. Um, we can hold the um, little hand, click the little hand button, hold the alternate key down, and it turns the cursor to an eyeball, and you can see we can start rotating that around. So right, that's a good perspective there. Notice it's a little high up. So we also want to drop that down um, to match this block right now. And we do that by going over to the Y position and putting in a minus 0.5 and that should, that'll drop it right down and so again looking at it it looks like it's lined up the bottom of the wheels are lined up with where the ground's going to be in there all right we're good so now we want to see this is a if this is the right size and shape for us thinking that maybe three cubes long might be about the right size for it if you wanted to make that just a little bit smaller 
there's your scale down here. It's set for a scale of 10, 10, 10. That's just because the way the designer made the model, um, he made it, um, didn't use it 1, 1, 1. He did 10, 10, 10. That's all fine. It's all, these are relative figures. So we could go ahead and um, make that bike a little shorter, longer, but I'm going to keep it just a shape for now, uh, for purposes of demo. Now, how do we know how long that really is? Well, you can eyeball it a little bit to see what it is. Another way that I like to do is use this cube as a reference. So if we go over to this cube right now, and we right click on it, and we click duplicate, and then right click on it again, and click duplicate again, we now have three cubes here that are child of this prefab package up here. So these are all stacked on top of each other right now. You can't really see it. So if we go here, remember our first cube is 0, 0, 0 position, 0, 0, 0. We're going to take this one here and make this one, um, let's say, um, 1. And then we'll take, go down to click on the other cube we made and make that one minus 1. So now we have um, a little model in there to show us what, how long this would be. So we can kind of go back up to the parent here, so we're actually affecting all three at the same time, and click this checkbox, and you can see the bike looks like it's just about three um, blocks long. That'll be important when you write your XML to be able to tell that this is a multi-dimensional object, which means it has it occupies more than one block of space in the game. So we would use three on the x-axis in the multi-dim statement to be able to um, make sure that we you know, are able to place and, and not overlap this part, uh, object in the game. So let's look at it, what it looks like from another side. We'll spin around and you can see it's higher than a block so we're going to have to use a multi-dim of two unless we shrink it down and it's a tiny bit wide for a block. You see this little bit of overhang here. So we can go ahead and get rid of that. Um, we can kind of squeeze this bike, make it a little narrower. And we do that by going back to the trike. And you can just basically play with the scale a little bit. Um, we want to go ahead and let's see if we can just change the z-axis from 10 to 9. Oh, that brought it down. That's not what we wanted. My bad. Bring that back to 10. And let's go ahead and try what it would do if we made this one 9. And you see that shrunk it a little bit. And then if we go to, finally, the x-axis and make it 9, you notice the wheel no longer sticks out past the, past the bike. It's inside there now. You could kind of play with that, 9.5, to just... Yep, see it's a little just stuck out a little bit, maybe 0 0.4, no, nope, maybe 0.3. Eh, still sticking out. I'm gonna stick to 9.0 or 9. And that now the bike fits perfectly within that cube there, so you don't have to worry about multi-dimming. Well, actually the, the bars are stuck off. So let's go ahead and change that to 8.5. 8. Maybe eight looks a little good. Yeah, I think that's just about right. Pretty close. All right, so we're gonna use that. So now we've made it a little narrower and fits inside the three blocks. So I think scale-wise, we're good to go there with these coordinates. And remember, we did that on the tricycle. We, didn't, we haven't made a prefab container for it yet because we're just doing everything on our trike here. So let's go ahead. Uh, now that we have imported it, we've oriented it, we've scaled it, last thing we want to do is make sure it has the mesh that we talked about before. So we go up here and tag it with the T mesh tag so we can interact with it in game. We now have that on. And we need to put a collider on it so we can't walk through this. Now you've got a couple of choices here. But to add a collider, you come down to Add Component and go down to Physics. This is physics three-dimensional, so you click on that. And you got some choices of different colliders. Capsule for kind of uh, pill-shaped things, round colliders, box colliders for squares and rectangles, ones for characters, so on. And a mesh collider, which will put the collider only on the detail of the object. So box colliders um, and sphere colliders, these colliders are all more processor efficient than the mesh collider. Mesh collider is very useful if, let's say you made a tower that was 20 blocks high 
and the first three blocks were empty and you wanted to be able to walk under it, you'd have to put a mesh container on it. So it only puts it on the actual pipes that build that tower and not the space between it. When you put a box collider on it, and I'll show you the collider basically, the collider basic is this reference here. I'm going to toggle the cubes off temporarily here to get that out of the way so you can see. And we'll go back to the bike. When I click on Edit Collider, you see it's pretty much already using this green box shape to show you what the um, collider dimensions will be. So if I spin that around, you see anywhere you hit in that green box, you're going you're gonna to walk into that or shoot an arrow. It's going to be a hit on that particular box. Now, if you click the Edit Collider, you see you get these little dots. You can hold on those dots and you can adjust that the relative size but you want to get pretty much the whole thing in there. If instead we had used a mesh collider, I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to add a mesh collider in there. Again, physics, mesh collider. And what that does is all of this bluish highlighted stuff, the collider is only on that those this area in here. It's not on the spaces. So you could shoot an arrow between this wheel and the frame and it would go right through with the with the mesh collider. So let's get rid of that. To get rid of a mesh collider, again, you click on that little button here, and you can remove that component. And we'll click on the box collider again, and now we're good to go with that. So now we have our collider on it. There's an animator here, but basically it's not being used. You could just turn that off. Uh, doesn't matter because it's not actually pulling anything in. We haven't animated this bicycle, make the wheels turn or anything. Um, we have the mesh sign, so now this is ready entirely for importing, uh, exporting, sorry. So it's the same process. First we want to go here, click, and we want to create an empty container. And we will rename that one um, Tricycle Prefab, anything you want, but I like to use, uh, actually it's kind of important to spell it right, because when you write the XML, yeah, you'll get it wrong. So prefab, tricycle prefab. And so we now have that. As we said last time, you want to check. Notice I mentioned sometimes weird numbers get stuck in there because of stuff that you're doing playing around. Well, there it is. Should be all zeros, right? And it's not. So we click on the little um, gear and hit reset. And now we clean that out. We want to do that before we drag our object into that container because otherwise it would reset its location. We don't want to do that. We got these numbers just the way we want them. So again, finally, we take that and we go ahead and drag it down. And I click this because I like to just put things in the main asset things for exporting purposes. You can make your own folder and do it, but this is the way I'm doing it. And drag it down and drop it. So now we have a tricycle prefab right here. Now notice it already had prefab number one because I had already built one here. And so it's got a copy of it. These are actually identical in every way, shape, or form, so no big deal. Another thing we want to do is um, I want to show you how to package a couple of things up. So let's say this is Tricycle. This is named tri uh, Tricycle Prefab, and this one's named Tricycle Prefab 1. And we have a cube prefab. So we've got three prefabs here. One's, this one's a little narrow. You can see in the lower right window here, watch when I click on it. One's narrow, one's fatter. The two basically look similar, but they're different prefabs. Let's say I want to add both of them to the game for some reason. Well, how, when you do the export before, remember we simply went ahead and we went right click and we build asset from uh, build asset bundle from selection. Just highlight both of them now with the control key. Now when you click on this build asset, it's going to take both of these and stick it into whatever the name of the package um, that you decide to come up with. So I'm going to save it on my desktop and my naming convention here uh, you could say, let's say we're going to package um, a bunch of bikes. We're going to make a lot of bikes. I'm just going to make it bikes with a plural on it, .unity3d, and save that. And it will build that asset by it. But now there's two objects in there. One of them is called Tricycle Prefab, and one of them is called Tricycle Prefab Space 1. Now, I don't recommend you put spaces in your names, but... Um, because we saved an identical copy, it automatically renamed that. But you would address this in XML of these objects completely separately. So uh, where you would call the uh, bikes 
as the container when you imported an XML, you would simply reference these individual names as the object in that container you want to pull out. And that's how you go ahead and package multiple objects in there. I hope uh, you've learned a couple of new things on this. Um, go ahead and pull some stuff down from the store, um, resize it, scale it, and then export it into packages and play around. And uh, we we'll look forward to talking to you in the uh, next video.